from Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. The World Skating League is on the air. This is Roller Jam, and we're very happy to have you with us tonight from a packed Roller Jam Arena here in Orlando at Universal Studios. And tonight, we have a terrific game for you. And once again, everybody, I'm Rory Marcus, along with Lee Hawk Rearman. And tonight, we bring you the Illinois Riot and the Nevada Hot Dice. And we bring you a game when we look back to last week, and the debacle that was the roller derby queen contest, we kind of have a cloud hanging over the league in a way. Well, we don't have a queen, I don't, I don't think. Who knows whose name was on that list? I think until they determine who it was, I'm crowning you the interim roller I'm derby not eligible. queen. Sorry. But Kenneth Lowe, this guy has got his work cut out for him. Nobody likes him. He's got this feud continuing with Mark D'Amato. This battle is, is going to continue, and that is the most important, seemingly the biggest story here off the track in the World Skating League. Last week, General Manager Kenneth Logue hesitated and then said the words, Lindsey Francis for the Roller Derby Queen. Now, Danny Wolf has been looking into this. Broadway Danny's in the infield. What have you got, Danny? Thank you, Rory. Again, the hot topic is the whereabouts of Kenneth Logue III. The last time we saw him, he was handing the trophy reluctantly to Mark D'Amato and the enforcers for winning the Wild West shootout. So guess what? Then he scrammed out of Vegas as quick as he can, obviously embarrassed about what happened in the Roller Derby Queen debacle. Here's what we learned in the last few days. Commissioner Jerry Seltzer deeply, seriously embarrassed about what happened in that contest. Because of that, he has temporarily restrained Kenneth Loeb's duties in the World Skating Leagues. Stripped him of some of his power, if you will, in an attempt to bring the skaters and management more together, he has given some of those powers to the official skaters representative. I'm talking about Mark D'Amato. Mark will be my guest at halftime, and we'll talk to him about some of his newly gained powers. Back to you, Rory. Thanks, Danny. Restrained the powers of Kenneth Logue. That'll be interesting to see what Mark D'Amato has in mind with his new powers. Let's talk about tonight's game now, the Nevada Hot Dice and the Illinois Riot. And when you talk about the Hot Dice, you look at a couple of guys on the men's side. Mark Weber is one of them. He uses brute force, and you see him there attacking Sean Atkinson. Some would say Atkinson's his idol, but Weber's done pretty well himself. Now, Jason McDaniel, the athletic one, puts the skates up on the rail, backs his way right into a terrific block. And between those two players, Jason McDaniel and Mark Weber, the Nevada Hot Dice, a very tough a duo on the men's side. Well, absolutely. But if you remember in the Wild West shootout, Mark Weber all but guaranteed victory for his Nevada Hot Dice. Of course, he was embarrassed, similar to what Kenneth Logue has been going through. And he has got his work cut out for him. These guys, as you mentioned, are very athletic, wonderful ability. Let's hope he can kind of get it back together here in Orlando because we know he sure as heck can't foretell the future. Well, the riot with a couple of good players of their own, like little Richard Brown, Ray Robles. Let's stand by now and let's get those player introductions. And here come the riot. Hattie Delgado and some of her uh, her women folk have been challenged by King Richard Brown to step up. The women have been a real sore spot for the riot, Roy. Oh, I don't think he calls them women folk. He has other names for them. And here comes the <laughs> Illinois riot men. You saw Ray Robles skate by, waiting for the grand entrance of the king. And there he is, Richard Brown. The king, he's got a big smile on his face, playing to the crowd. I don't know what the heck he's got the smile about. They're coming out of the Wild West shootout with that dismal last place finish. Oh, he's smiling because he's on the track. He figures this is his home, and he's always happy to be here. Now, here come the Nevada Hot Dice women, who, by the way, Hawk, have ditched those showgirl sizzle outfits. Well, I don't know what the heck they're doing, Rory. I kind of was partial toward the metallic outfit that Jim the Heartbreak, the Heartbreaker had on and Shea Brown, I guess, but now she's the leader. She's got some intensity on her face, but I'm disappointed. I love those outfits. Well, she's here and she means business, as you can see by the look on her face. Now the hot dice man coming out there is Jason McDaniel with a yell for the crowd and Mark Weber wearing oh. the old-fashioned quad skates, I think kind of poking fun at the veteran Ray Robles who wears the quad skates. Well, hey, he might be making fun of D'Amato, Rory. Mark Weber has skated over to our own Broadway Danny Wolf on those old quad skates. Let's go down now to Danny. All right, Mark, I got to ask you, the retirement tour continues, I guess, but the question is, what are you doing on quad skates? <laughs> That's a funny question. I have to show every, all these old people, you know, Ray Robles. I, I can only skate on quad Danny lines because I am the great one. So you're mocking Ray Robles by wearing quads. He's got a fiery Latin temper. I don't think you want to bring that out in him. I ain't got to worry about Ray. Ain't nobody to worry about. And let me ask you finally, Mark D'Amato wears quad skates too, and I know he's your uh, skater's rep. I don't hear you uh, mocking or seeing you mock Mark D'Amato. I have no problems with Mark D'Amato. Me and Mark, you know, we're cool. 
Yeah, but you're going to have problems with me because I'm the Latin Spitfire, brother, and I have a temper you don't believe about yet. Because when you get on that track, it'll be a whole different ball game, brother. And you better believe it. I don't care if you say I'm old, but I will take care of business when you are without you. Here are the rules of Roller Jam. There are four six-minute periods. The women skate periods one and three. The men skate periods two and four. There are five skaters per team, two jammers, and three blockers. The blockers wear white helmets. The jammers have the black helmet with the stripes. Points are scored when jammers lap opposing team members. Here's an example of what I was just talking about. The jammer for the green team breaks out from the pack and circles the track. For each member of the red team that he or she passes, one point is earned. Patsy Delgado, will she step up to the challenge issued her by the king, King Richard? And Shea Brown, she's put away the metallic outfit. She's got a new look of seriousness on her face, Rory. Game is underway. The game is underway. The first jam of the night, and right away, Patsy Delgado gets out for the Illinois Riot, number 59. She's on the old quad skates, too, although I didn't see Mark Weber mention anything about her. Kim Hart is out there for the Nevada Hot Dice, and down goes Kim Hart as Crystal Schneider and Patsy Delgado get out together. The Riot trying to get on the scoreboard first. Well, Patsy Delgado, you're seeing a very aggressive beginning by her. She may have taken the words of Little Richard Brown in the challenge, and she may be showing up and wants to show the whole world skating league quads or not. She can play. Little Richard Brown, you see him standing there in the infield trying to get the pack to slow down a little bit so Delgado and Schneider can catch up and talk about a leader. Shea Brown in the back of the pack, tying things up, trying to keep the ride off the scoreboard, and she takes on two at one time and knocks them both down. And now again, just for good measure. And look at the intensity in her face, Roy. She had promised that she was going to come out here and make a statement earlier that she is no longer in the shadow of anybody. Jim Hart or maybe Denise Malone to the Florida Sun Dogs. She's always felt like she was in somebody's shadow. She wants to be the leader. And you see her taking that aggression and putting it into action. My goodness. She, look, she looks like Jim Washington out there maybe, the New York Enforcers. There was no scoring in that first jam. And here we go again as the uh, hot guys who, whose women got a little earful from their captain, Richard Brown, a minute ago, gets Millie Guthrie out there to lead this jam. Millie Guthrie out in front. And chasing her is Mindy Smith of the Hot Dice. The two of them come together now near the back of the pack, and Smith gets the best of it. Now the Hot Dice with a chance to break on top and get the lead in this game. And they do. Mindy Smith picked up one or two. Shea Brown put somebody into the rail, and Smith is still going. Now she comes up to Delgado in the middle of the pack. Mindy Smith picked up at least two, and now she calls it off. We'll see what Sean Corbin awards them. He gave them three, so three hot dice points there. Well, Shea Brown once again goes right after the nemesis. Before Corbin got there, Shea Brown must have thrown five or six right hands right into the rib cage area. What's gotten into her? Premiering this March on AXN, two brand new series, Andromeda. Welcome back, everybody. It's 3-2, the hot guys leading. And Shea Brown had intensity on her face coming up for the intros, Rory, and she has not disappointed any of us with her physical play right out of the chute. And now she's out on a jam, so Shea Brown grabs the jammer helmet and says, here, let me have it, I'll get you some points. And look who she's out there with, her sister, Shauna Brown, who goes down. Sister against sister, and there's Shauna picking herself up as Shea Brown comes around to try and put more points on the board. Right now the hot dice in the lead in the game. Oh, good quick move there by Shea Brown. Looks like she can do it all. Blocking, scoring, picks up another couple of points. Puts her hands out to her side and goes to say, isn't anybody going to hit me? No, nope, not this time. Over the rail goes Delgado. And Shea Brown still out there on the jam. 
and up once again against her sister, Shauna Brown. Now she calls it off, and Shauna gives her a little sisterly elbow for the trouble. With sisters like that, who needs neighbors they really don't like? But Shay Brown, I don't like the outfit, but I like her play. Shay Brown making a statement here early in this game, and the x men celebrate. The women skating the first period, the Nevada Hot Dice in the white and green, and the Illinois Riot in the red and blue with gold numbers. And right now, the Hot Dice have the 5-2 lead here early in the game. Quick pace in the game here in the first period. Once again, out of the jam for the Riot, Crystal Schneider breaks away. She's from Greensboro, North Carolina, and they get two jammers out now. It looks like they're conspiring to get their heart. Well, and you you really have to wonder which of these riot women are going to step up. We talked about it at the beginning. Patsy, Patsy Delgado was looked to perhaps to emerge as a real scorer. But these guys really have to find someone. And right now, maybe Crystal Schneider and Billy Guthrie are doing that. But somebody really has to step up, Rory. Are these guys going to be in for a long season? Because you can't do it only on one side of the ball. Not stepping up, but stepping back. Shea Brown gets knocked out of the play by Patsy Delgado. She never saw Delgado there waiting for him. And Brown won't like that at all if the riot gets on the scoreboard. That's the first time that Delgado has really asserted herself in this game. And allowed Schneider and Millie Guthrie to get the points. And now Delgado's up there against the rail, kind of yelling at the crowd. Richard Brown was clapping here. And the riot had a good moment in this game. But we just talked about Schneider and Millie Guthrie trying to emerge as perhaps the scorers for the Ryan. Unfortunately for Patsy Delgado, those quad skates don't afford her a lot of agility and speed. If she's going to get it done, it's probably going to have to be as a blocker. There's just no way you can go as fast as the gals on the inline. It's 8 to 5 right now, the Ryan on top. And they are hot dice. Looking to get back into the lead of this game. Mindy Smith out on the jam, and she's all by herself. Boy, she's got some speed, doesn't she? Mindy Smith coming up to the back of the pack. The Dice doing a good job inside of the pack, and right by Delgado goes Mindy Smith. Now she picks up another one. And she gets towards the middle of the pack now, trying to get some more as Patsy Delgado tries to recover. Well, Mindy Smith's a good skater. There's Delgado back there again now to try and block her. She comes up to Patsy, who completely missed her and goes flying. She's picked up the same two over and over again, so not getting a lot of points. Norma Marshall back to block now, and Mindy Smith calls it off with a good jam, and let's see how many they give her. Sean Corbin says four, I believe. Ray Robles will have to go up against Robles and the Illinois Riots. Stay with us.